I love the Grey Muda, dude. I grew up with Grey Muda, so it was a treat for me to see that dude show up. I used to watch him wrestle Sting and tag with Sting back in the day. Dude, he was at uh, StarCast. He did a panel, or not a panel, he did a Q&A. Not even a Q&A. I don't think they did a Q&A. They just did a discussion. Um, but he was with Sonny Ono, man, and Sonny was the translator um, for the questions. And, Amazing. dude, Sonny, man, he came – well, first of all, yes, great mood in person, very cool. Uh, but Sonny came in to the media area randomly, and he's like, what are you guys doing? And we're like, we're waiting to talk to Bischoff. And he's like, oh, well, that's great. You guys are great. I can't even believe I'm here. I had a heart attack 10 days ago on the airplane coming to the States. And we're all like, what? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what? And he's like, yeah, yeah. My doctor said it's because I keep coming to the States and I eat the American diet. And he said, Asian people who eat the American diet, they're the most at risk <laughs> for heart attacks. And literally nobody's recording this. Nobody's like, he just came in and started telling us all this. And we're all like, oh. <laughs> and then you're like, so you want to go grab a, you want to go grab a hot dog and a beer? And he's like, no. I, I even, did not want to grab a hot dog and a beer. I didn't even. Think, a heart attack. I didn't even think about it. But outside the venue, they literally there was a bacon fest going on outside of Starcast. That's oh God, crazy. So anyway, poor guy he comes to America and we're we're trying to get him to eat like the the Pizza Hut pizza with the hot dog crust. Oh. Yeah, and you dip Terrible. that in nacho cheese here, Sonny. That's what you do, <laughs> you know. Oh God! <laughs> um, well, listen, Sonny Ono's heart attack aside, which we we uh, we wish him well. Yes. We love Sonny Ono. Yes, um, stay healthy, bro. Um, uh, that that match was, I mean, cool setup. You got those judges. You got big fight feel. You know, it could go an hour or more based on the contextual clues of everything that's been said. Uh, I thought. I thought. The match started off kind of, you know, I know they're not trying to get blown up and, and blow their wad early on, but I, I didn't love that it took like seven or eight or nine minutes to get into the match. I thought it should have been a little more bell to bell, especially the way it ended. Um, but I, overall, you know, I, I enjoyed it, and they told an amazing story. I think Cody's still across the board. Every wrestling company, Cody is one of the, if not the, best storyteller in the ring right now uh what's your take man i thought well i thought i think the match took a pacing uh, the pacing had to change as soon as cody did the dive to the outside he went face first into the steel busted himself up the hard way and after i'm watching it back i think i think he did it on purpose like the, the way he set his hands and he kind of leaned his face into it you know you could have rolled you know, there's way, there was a lot of easy ways I think he could have uh, avoided going face first into that. But I think he maybe got his bell wrong because he hit his, he decided to hit his head into the ramp, which is so Cody because he doesn't care. Um, and then Jericho Ugh. looked, then did Jericho looked at him and was like, "Dude!" And if you watched it, you know Jericho grabbed the chair. But after that dive, there was a lot of Jericho punch, punch, fire back, kick. Jericho cuts him off. Cody goes down, and Jericho just walks around. There was a lot of that going on. Yeah, and Jericho, did, he did a good job of working around it. I saw a lot of the kicks and punches and shots he was taking, and even the lion salt, you know, moonsault thing. It was like he kept doing moves that were more body-oriented, and he stayed away from the cut knowing that, you know, Cody's not going to be able to see out of his eyes if that keeps bleeding. Yeah, well, and then uh, the match ends. Uh, I had seen MJF was holding a towel on the ring apron. I looked over at the guy next to me. I think MJF's going to throw the talent on Cody. He's like, nah. And then he threw it in. I mean, after the match, you have the, the two sitting Man. there. For, yeah. That, well, I'll, I'll put it all together here. He throws the towel. They get in the ring. They do the face off. Everybody's waiting for Cody to hit MJF. And MJF decides to kick Cody in the groin and take off here. So a lot of questions. Like, what does it mean that he threw in the towel? Because Cody said if he didn't win, he was never going to vie for the world title again. But he didn't give up. So does he – is that his out for for the stipulation, you think? Man, I mean, the I think – I think that's definitely the out combined with the fact that Cody said I will never challenge for the title again if I lose. That also puts the onus on him of I will never challenge – that doesn't mean that the person holding the title can't challenge him. You know, they could try to redefine it with that sort of sense of minutia if they want to. But, uh, but yeah, no, I think the, the match was good. The ending surprised me. I thought Cody was going to turn on him. And, uh, and, and, and I didn't even know how that would go, you know? Like, I mean, Brandy just took this harsh right turn down Heelville. 
and it got dark. So I'm like, maybe Cody's going to mirror that and have his own run of something darker and change his look or, you know, turn on the rest of the elite. It starts with MJF and then it turns into him turning on the other guys or something, you know, I, I did not expect what happened. And then by the way, that fan, I think got in trouble for throwing that drink, but I just have to give props. Whatever fans threw that drink at MJF, it made that moment, dude. Yep. It made that moment. That's some like bash of the beach 96 crap. I'm totally fine with that once in a while. I thought it was great. Well, and I, uh, I, I, the, the, my only note here was like, I thought Cody was going to hit MJF too. And I, I'm, I'm going into this with an open mind. You know, MJF's a great heel. Cody's a great storyteller. I'm sure they've got a lot of, pl- a lot planned, but I think it's going to be harder for MJF, um, not being the one fighting, uh, fighting up, so to speak, you know, being the one to try to kind of punch down at Cody Rhodes because he got one over on him. Right. I, I, I think in my head, it's just an easier play to have Cody turn on MJF and MJF come out and be like, I'm a dick, but at least I was nice to you, you know, and he can still kind of be him. And then the fans see him as this kind of anti-hero. I don't know how this is going to play with him just 100% full on heel punching down a Cody, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a moment for, I agree with you. I kind of, I kind of would have preferred Cody turning on him or, or something of that ilk. But I think right now outside of Jericho, there's a really cozy spot for someone who can do great heel work and is a talker. And I think that's MJF. I think he'll be like in that second slot of heel underneath Jericho based on his mouth way more than his in ring work. And, uh, and I think that's a good spot for him, assuming he can, keep it going and they'll, and they'll have engaging storylines. Um, because I think guys like Pac, I, I love that guy. And he's, he's got a great look. He looks like a character from a Star Wars movie or Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or something like he's got this great presence, but he's not a mic worker. Uh, he's not a mic guy. So I think, I think this is that moment from JF to take the step up and, and move up and have that moment. But, um, I don't know. What do you think? I, I again, guess I'm being kind of vague. Uh, it's going to be about the promo, right? You know, two weeks ago, Moxley was the one who cut the promo uh, that everybody buzzed about. Last week, it was Cody that cut the promo everybody buzzed about. This is MJF's moment, MJF's moment to grab that microphone, have that spotlight, and make his case and have this all make sense. You know, because, again, I just think it's going to be harder for yeah. MJF to punch down on Cody I don't know how fans are going to react yes. to him. So it'll be it'll, it'll solely be on how he handles himself this week, I think, that's going to set the tone for how this how this goes forward. That's fair, right? Completely agree. No, yeah, it'll be it'll be all about promo versus promo and um, hopefully they can have a good in-ring match. I haven't been that impressed with MJF's physicality yet. Um I think he's one of the top 3 on the mic. His uh his inner or his his work behind the desk uh, on AEW Dark when he was doing like the heel commentary, some of the most entertaining stuff I've seen from the entire company. I thought it was amazing. Um, but once again, I can't tell you one MJF match that I like. And I'm like, oh, you got to watch this MJF match. 